Hey guys, it's Phil and welcome to a video about the NVIDIA RIVA 128 and 128 ZX. Previously on Phil's computer lab, we built a Pentium 2 300 retro gaming PC using that same video card. It was my first time using the RIVA 128 and I felt that it really deserves its own video. So today we will take a closer look at this card, check out the drivers, explore what's good and not so good about it and as always throughout the video we will take a look at lots of games to see what this card can do. All the games running in the background are running at the 640x480 resolution and I'll put in some text so you know what game is playing. The computer we're using in this video has an Intel Pentium 2 running at 300 MHz. We've got 256 MB of RAM. There's an Oriel Vortex 2 sound card. And of course, we're running Windows 98 SE. The NVIDIA RIVA 128 launched at the end of 1997. The version I have is from ELSA, it's the ELSA Victory Eraser, but there are other cards from SDB, ASUS for example, and also Diamond. The card has 4 megabytes of video RAM, it's got a 128-bit memory interface, the core and memory runs at 100 megahertz, and it's got a VGA output although some cards also have video inputs and outputs. The card is available in the AGP interface, but also as a PCI card. It is compatible with DirectX 5 and OpenGL. However, I have tried a few newer DirectX 6 games, such as Draken and Expandable, and they do run, but performance is pretty limited. In 1998, Nvidia followed up with the River 128 Set X. That card has double the memory, we're looking at 8 megabytes of VRAM, which lets you run games at higher resolutions. It also has an improved DAC for a sharper VGA output. Now, a little bit careful when shopping around, there are some versions with SDR memory, which apparently have a 64-bit memory interface, and usually that means a lot less performance. However, I have such a card and I did a bit of testing and I found it to be very similar to the 128-bit version. In some games it's a little bit faster, in some games it's a little bit slower, but all in all it's really not much of a deal. If you want to buy such a card now on eBay, you're looking at around $20 to $30 and lots of cards are available from companies such as ELSA, STB or Diamond. There's lots to talk about the drivers. You basically have two options. You can go with the manufacturer drivers. So these are drivers released from ELSA or ASUS, which have their own little options. And they are recommended if you also want to use the video in and the outputs. The other option is to use the NVIDIA reference drivers. And the latest version 3.37 can still be downloaded from the NVIDIA website. Now, there are lots of stories about driver issues. Luckily, we are in a much better position. We can just grab the latest drivers and avoid all the issues. And using the NVIDIA uh, reference driver version 3.37, I must say I had very little issues. I did run in a few issues. However, I was able to resolve them by either patching the game or by changing some of the compatibility options inside the driver. And we will have a look at some of those. So basically the 3.37 reference driver worked really well for me and I got all the games that are shown in the video and some other games that I tried worked without any issues. One thing that stands out about the drivers are the magnitude of options. There are lots of little things you can change and NVIDIA basically really tried to make those drivers work. Now there are some issues and glitches in various games, but if you play around with these options, you might be able to actually address all of them. So one example we have here is Wing Commander Prophecy. This is the full version and you can see in the HUD, in the heads up display, some of the textures uh, the transparency doesn't work and you have a, a red or blue uh, rectangle around it. And to solve this, you just go into the driver and you change an option to do with the color keying and you change that to compatibility and then it works. Now, I had a similar issue with uh, transparent 
textures not working and the smoke being black in Motor Racer in the demo. I couldn't solve that however in the full version and with the latest patch applied that issue is resolved. So sometimes if you run into an issue either you have to change some options in, in, in the driver or you just patch the game and see if that fixes it. The most interesting and talked about aspect of this card is the 3D image quality. This card has a very unique look. Firstly, it is very sharp and detailed compared to other cards that use heavily bilinear filtering. This card looks quite different. So it looks sharp and detailed, but also quite rough and raw. And it's got this grainy look, basically like a film grain. So if you like that sharpness and the grain, grainy look, this card might be really for you. There's also a bit of texture shimmering going on. That is just a bit of noise and shimmering as you move through the game world. There are also minor visual errors, for example, seams between polygons where uh, white lines appear and sometimes text can be a bit blurry and some games have the image a little bit too dark, but a lot of these games have an option to increase the brightness. So to sum it up, it's a very sharp and detailed image, but also quite rough and raw and I can see this appealing to a lot of people at you because uh, when I did my 3DFX Voodoo review, a lot of views, uh, a lot of my viewers actually said that they prefer the sharper look and not that heavily filtered look that the 3DFX Voodoo generates. In terms of signal quality of the VGA output, at 640x480, which is basically the resolution that most of these games run really well at, the VGA signal quality is actually excellent, so I have no complaints. However, if you're running your desktop at 1600x1200, it is clearly not as clean as a Matrox G400 or Voodoo 3, for example. And another highlight of this card is that you can run games in windowed mode. That's something the 3 dfx Voodoo, for example, couldn't do. So here we've got Quake 2 running in window mode. All you have to do is press Alt-Enter to toggle between window mode and full screen mode. I also want to talk about anti-aliasing. Although the latest NVIDIA reference driver has the anti-aliasing options in the drivers, they don't do anything. You can click on the menu options, but nothing will happen. You need to use one of the older manufacturer drivers, for example, the ELSA driver or the one from STB. And then there is still more that needs to be in place for AA to work. I recommend you using a card with 8 megabytes of VRAM because some of the drivers actually check how much memory you have and will only let you use AA when you have more than 4 megabytes. The other thing that is a bit annoying is that anti-aliasing has to be supported by the application so you can't just force it in any game. And well, there are not many games out there that let you do that and I found two applications where I could try it out and that was the PC Player Benchmarks, the direct, um, PC Player Direct 3D Benchmark as well as the X demo and the first thing we can see is that it doesn't really look that nice. We can see it does a little bit of uh, anti-aliasing but the performance really suffers and also the image becomes even more grainy than it already is. So really this is a, an interesting feature and it's um, one of the first cards that really has this built in. However the performance impact is massive and it doesn't really look nice so it's not usable and very likely that's why NVIDIA decided not to enable it anymore in their latest drivers. The other thing I want to talk about is VSync. The driver doesn't have any options to toggle VSync and for direct 3D games VSync is actually forced on. There's no way to turn it off. You can try tools like PowerStreet but it's not gonna do anything. Under OpenGL VSync is disabled by default. The only way you can Disable VSync in Dark 3D games is if the game has an option to do that itself. Um, an example is the Final Reality benchmark, for example. Make sure that the VSync is disabled and it does it on its own. Now, you might be wondering, well, that's a bit of a pain because VSync, if I disable it, I can get higher performance. However, you also get tearing. Now, 
I reckon the V-Sync being on is not an issue. At 640x480, that's the resolution you're gonna play uh, games most of the time. In terms of performance, the card achieves around 30 to 60 FPS. So most of the time, it will be around the 30 FPS, FPS mark anyway. So having V-Sync enabled is not a big deal. It's much better to have constant 30 FPS and no tearing than have the FPS uh, fluctuate up and down and seeing tearing on your screen. <laughs> In terms of performance, I don't want to go into too much detail because I've got another video in the works where I'm going to compare the River 128 against the 3DFX Voodoo and have a proper 1997 shootout. Now, I tried quite a few games and basically at the 640x480 resolution, most games from the 1997 era will run perfectly fine and you will get a frame rate between 30 and 60 FPS. So with VSync running, you should be locked at the 30 FPS most of the time. And in 1997, the River 128 was basically one of the fastest graphics cards, depending on the game. It was the fastest graphics card that you could buy. So let's wrap it up. What an interesting card. I'm so happy that I finally got around to checking it out. Back in 1997, I only had the Voodoo. I didn't know of any other cards. So this was really an interesting experience and a journey for me. Now, the look of this card is really interesting and unique. It's very sharp detailed but also rough and raw around the edges it's got that grain going you can call it film grain if you want and if you like that look hey this might be a reason for you to get this card i know that a lot of you viewers out there when i did the 3dfx voodoo review you commented on the soft and filtered look that act that you actually prefer the sharper look of the software render so that card will likely have a, a visual quality that you find very interesting the card is also reasonably easy to find on ebay and those are just buy now prices so if you uh, have a bit more time for price hunting you should be able to get it at a very low price so for 1997 uh, machines and 1997 games this is really a decent card you're gonna get good performance and definitely an interesting experience and also most games will work without any issues you might have to spend a little bit of time finding a patch for the game or looking into the drivers for some compatibility options but apart from that every game every demo or tried worked just fine and that's it guys thank you so much for watching on the screen are a couple of video suggestions subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so hit the like or the dislike button share the video and leave me a comment what do you think about this card do you like the sharp detail but also raw look or do you prefer a softer and more filtered look i see you soon with another video